Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another fantastic edition of Sit Back with Shaq and Anu, coming to you live from our Podhub studios and, of course, live on Channel One Dialogue TV. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thursday night, 9 p.m., the show, of course, focuses on individuals who are trending at the moment. And as you can see, we have an individual who's been trending for the last three months? <laughs> Probably six weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks. But it seems far longer, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> so we've got uh, the uh, Minister of Power and Energy, Councillor Vidaya, on the show with us. Thank you so much for being a part of the show, Councillor. Thank you for coming on. Busy schedule. We know you've been in the news for a very long time. And uh, yeah, thanks for so much for <laughs> dropping in. Thank, thank you for inviting me. I think, uh, I think uh, it's good to be here. Uh, there's a lot of questions that have been asked in the last three, four weeks yes. and just the last 48 hours as well. <laughs> so I think it's a good platform to answer all the questions. More, more than even the, the questions, there's a lot of speculation. Because people ask the questions and somehow we have to answer them. I don't know, even just today was yeah. just the media briefing. I think there was a lot of things taken out of context. Yeah. So yeah, it's a good platform to be on. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So we, let's clear the air immediately. Let's clear the air. The Minister, Councillor Vijay Sekhar, in the studio with us. And we've got lots to talk about on the show right now. As always, we kickstart with what we do on the show. So we'll start off with our daily poll. And uh, here it is. Okay, so the poll is usually a yes or no answer and uh, we'll have it on the screen right now. Uh, today's poll is interesting. So do you think the communication from the Power and Energy Ministry is more transparent now than it was before? Yes or no answers only. WhatsApp your answer to our hotline 0776-691-590. Okay, 0776-691-590. You can see it at the bottom of your screen. And uh, at the end of the show, we'll t uh, tell you where exactly it stands. It's something that you can actually pick up from this. <laughs> 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 It'll be pretty good because lots obviously watching on. We'll be back right after. And we've got something else that we basically do on the show where we clear out whatever has happened during the day. Absolutely. Especially on social media, there's lots of interesting things. So let's take a look at that. Yep, so let's go <laughs> ahead with the first stuff that we actually have on uh, the show today. Uh, Anu's going to go through the tweets that we picked out. Yeah, very interesting stuff. Uh, Jamila Hussein, of course, you know, everybody now kind of looks forward to her tweets. Diesel arrives. The final shipment of 40,000 metric tons of diesel under the Indian credit line arrived at the Colombo port. Uh, and of course, the hashtags are as usual. I mean, that's standard for her. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Right. Uh, and of course, this uh, this is what we were talking about just a little while ago. Uh, so, fuel supply for a day in Sri Lanka is the title. Uh, diesel supply is 5,400 metric tons, which are required, <coughs> and currently supplied is 3,000 metric tons. And diesel for next week is uh, allocated at 3,000 metric tons. Petrol. 3,400 metric tons required daily. Petrol currently supplied is 2,600 metric tons and, uh, you know, allocated for next week another 2,600 metric tons. So, obviously, we have seen the progress of the queues as they've gotten longer and longer and obviously, this is, this is a fact. You, exactly. know, you can't hide it. And uh, this is a clip that we actually took off uh, from your press con uh, today, Kanchana. Let's have that played on the show. Uh, 
kami pakai kita nak pusing permainan yang kila ni. Ada ke super diesel diesel dekat. Ada ke metric ton sama dengan dahnya ni tundas hara sim dedas high sim kami nak permainan yang tamai. Then kalau tu boleh ni buat kerana ni kerana saya biasa hara power tu kerana balap. Right, so there you go. That's the, of course we're going to get into that uh, I mean, in in detail as we yeah. move on because yeah. I think that's very pertinent because that happened today and um, we got the minister who's going to give us more details on that one. A couple of other stories that actually happened today, all relating uh, to the fuel situation today. Um, so uh, now this, of course, uh, was a story that was released: a delay in opening LCs. Uh, cause for the fuel rush, uh, according to the minister. Uh, we're going to talk about the delay also on the show uh, as to what the problem is. Um, public transport in limbo due to fuel shortage, which is a huge, huge issue uh, in Sri Lanka and so much. Almost everything is sort of reliant on fuel right now. Motor traffic department revenue drops by 40%. And uh, final few tweets that we have for you. This is something we really need to uh, talk about. Yeah. Uh, I don't know whether this is doable. <laughs> I don't know. Cars and Jeeps with an engine capacity of more than 2,000 cc should be temporarily banned, according to their government pillars. We'll talk mm -hmm. about that. Uh, you need to tell us, obviously, mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the truth in this. Fuel prices to be revised on the 24th. Mm -hmm. That's actually going about. And um, Minister reveals plans to register vehicles with fuel stations. So these are the stuff that we need to basically jump on today. So uh, this is a very interesting picture um, Karchana we took uh, because of the fuel situation right now, the travel that is actually taken on by the... By the Absolutely. Uh, you the think this is India, but it's not. It's, it's not. Uh, Sri Lanka. It's, it's, it's Shak, crazy. Have you traveled, traveled like this ever? Uh, no. I have. I have traveled <laughs> I have, I have, I have traveled like this in the bus. <laughs> Footboard travel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. engineering about it. It's it's absolute I mean it's not fun now no, it's because not. you have to do it, but you know, it's it can be fun. It's crazy. <laughs> All right, so yeah, we've got that out uh, uh, of the way. Um, the minister in uh, the studio right now. Um, well, there's a lot to talk about and <laughs> certainly uh, you know the situation that you are in uh, is not very pleasant, so to say, because you're somebody who needs to keep coming with answers. All we hear are questions. Where are we right now and where are we headed? Um, it's an interesting question because uh, right now it's, it's, it's a lot of struggling um, because um, we are not in a usual state where we just have to uh, order our supplies and that we have a banking system that supports us. Uh, but unfortunately, we are in a situation where uh, most of our banks cannot open up LCs. Uh, our credit ratings have gone down, downgraded. Uh, most of our permanent suppliers have been defaulted or payments have been deferred. Uh, so we have to look into new suppliers to register with CPC to uh, provide uh, the full requirements. Uh, so it's completely a new process and also when you have not honored payments in the last uh, 12 months to long-standing suppliers. Uh, when the word spreads around into oil producing nations, it's of very course. difficult to uh, do the new, new procurement for the new um, requirements that we have. So it's been a struggle um, and of course we have to thank the Indian government. Uh, the last three months we've, uh, we've basically enjoyed the, uh, the credit facilities uh, extended to us, uh, the 700 million. Uh, and as correctly said, uh, we received the, the last consignment of the last uh, consignment of the Indian credit facility, uh, the 40,000 metric tons in, uh, of diesel uh, this morning, and I think it's just started unloading as well. Uh, but there was some misunderstanding also. Um, when the Premier made the statement saying, uh, this is going to be our last shipment from the Indian credit line. Automatically, everyone thought this is going to be the last shipment ever to come to Sri Lanka. Yeah, I mean, it's like, I, it's like doomsday. That's, that's what yeah. we thought. Yes, <laughs> which is understood. Well, that's why you see a lot of people uh, gathering around the fuel stations, much more than what we have seen in the last few days. Right. Um, and of course, um, that, that, that is not the truth. Uh, of course, that was the last consignment from the Indian credit line. Of course, we have made other arrangements uh, to get more... Uh, full requirements into the country. So I can uh, convey the message now that we have successfully 
uh, opened up two LCs this evening. Right. Um, so I got the communication at 7 p.m. Uh, from the suppliers. That's exclusive, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. That's exclusive. <laughs> uh, so we are hoping um, uh, two of the vessels to be here, a diesel and a petrol consignment, um, somewhere in the next seven, eight days. Right. Um, so they have basically told us um, it will be here in the next five days, but I want to be yeah, sure about it. Right. Yeah. So it's seven, eight days unloading and uh, everything to finalize. And there's one more consignment that we are negotiating with. Uh, which we I hope uh, it is uh, moving from India uh, and we have already secured the finance for it. So for the first time, <laughs> I think in many weeks, uh, we have the money ready, but not the supplies. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> earlier, everything was that the vessels were here, we were paying demurrages, yes. it was getting delayed. Uh, when we had the dollars available, we didn't have the rupees for it. When we had the rupees for it, we didn't have the dollars available. <laughs> but for the first time in many weeks, um, we have the dollars and the rupees both ready for it, uh, but we couldn't find a, a confirmed shipment. Right. So we are doing certain uh, uh, arrangements with the suppliers. Uh, so we are hoping tomorrow morning we'll give the exact word on when it will arrive, but we are hoping in the next couple of days there's be a, another petrol consignment coming in, but I don't want to confirm right. immediately unless I have the confirmation in my table. Uh, but uh, that is the struggle that we are facing right now. Uh, so, we will probably have to go through this for the next three, four weeks until we finalize with um, um, some of the suppliers. We go into long term contracts, agreements. These are all new suppliers. Yes. Um, so, new agreements have to be done, and some arrangements have, we have never done it in Sri Lankan um, procurement process. So, it's all new to us all new to the officials and it's not like running a private company. I wish it was a private company. <laughs> uh, even though CPC is a different entity, you still have to go through this whole Kandal government procurement process. process. Um, everything has to be there in, um, I don't know. Uh, 600 people have to sign it. That's how it works, isn't it? Basically, 600 people <laughs> have to sign it. Yeah. Uh, right now, all 600 are refusing to sign <laughs> it. Yeah. That's, so that's a problem with that it. Do you the bureaucracy is actually trying to like, you know, kind of sabotage this or like bailey it somewhat or how, how does I'm, it I'm trying to understand that. Yeah. I, I don't know whether it's sabotage. I don't know whether it's how they have worked uh, their entire lives. Uh, but of course, there are guidelines to work with. Um, but what I felt in the last two and a half years working in um, in government office is that uh, there are laws that you can uh, try to speed things up. Right. But uh, most of the government officials use the laws to prevent the work from happening. Of happening yeah. When um, taking taking you back to the time where you accepted this portfolio, yeah. we were still down the doldrums at that point. And this was the time that obviously there was this mini cabinet shuffle that was going on. Um, there was a requirement of new faces to come in. And when you were handed this, why did you take it on? You knew that the situation <laughs> wasn't great. Actually, uh, before you answer that, let me rephrase that. You know? I mean, your political career is also the, and this is like, you know, probably this makes you the most talked about, perhaps the most even hated right now. Oh, yeah. Or, if, most what, hated, yeah. Uh, and certainly yeah. the man who's supposed to have all of the answers to everyone's questions. All the time. Yeah. Right. Um, no, I was also surprised. Um, now, I, uh, when I, we were called into, uh, so in the new cabinet, um, I thought I would get something that I was more familiar with right. um, because I worked in the fisheries sector as a state minister and we achieved so many uh, targets and we actually made some record breaking numbers last year, export value, uh, production, all those things, local production. Um, so when I was called into uh, the new cabinet, I thought, okay, I would probably take a step up and go into the fisheries cabinet portfolio. Right. Um, but uh, when everyone was swearing in before me, okay, the Minister of Fisheries was swearing in, <laughs> everyone else was swearing in, I'm, I'm probably the, uh, I'm the, uh, the only one who's there from the 2015 parliament. So right. I'm the youngest and the most inexperienced <laughs> person in this cabinet and the pre previous cabinet as well. Um, so I, I had to swear in after everyone else. Right. So that, that's the order how it works. So everyone is getting all these ministries. So I was thinking, okay, what's the ministry that's <laughs> left? So unfortunately, uh, for me at that point, it was a power and energy. I thought, okay, it was two separate ministries. At least I'll have one ministry. So when I went up to 
the president, I was given first the Ministry of Energy. I thought, okay, Ministry of Energy, I, I'll have to do some work on it. And he said, okay, wait, there's one more, uh, <laughs> Ministry of Power. So two separate ministries, as two separate ministers I was sworn in. It took me a little bit of time to adjust into uh, what I was going to face. Uh, but then I, of course, um, always thought that the president had the confidence and the prime minister had the confidence in giving me such a difficult job to do. Um, and of course, I love a challenge as well. So and come, the, uh, come up the man, they say. Um, <laughs> and, and it's crisis is always an opportunity also to of course. make the right, uh, I don't know, make, make it the right way. So uh, anyway, all of us going into the new cabinet knew we were going to be in the spotlight. Uh, didn't know how long it will be for. Yeah. And even now, we don't know how long it's going to be for. But um, even when I took up the portfolio for fisheries, uh, what I thought was this is an opportunity that I might not get any other day. Right. So, um, so I'll do my best in the fisheries sector. That's how I worked. So when I got this opportunity, I thought, okay, if I have it for two weeks, if I have it for four weeks, I'll do the right things. I'll give it my best shot. Uh, and of course, I have seen uh, how the power and energy ministers have worked and uh, where people had questioned them. Uh, being transparent was one of the biggest things. Communication was lacking, uh, wrong communications. Um, so we want to make that uh, correct from the beginning as well. Uh, but of course, I knew I was getting into a very difficult job, most difficult job uh, probably. And the president calls every day. Uh, Prime Minister calls me every day. All the ministers, uh, MPs calls every day because um, I think the whole country is depending on these two sectors. Of course, absolutely. So of course. not just the, the whole country, the whole <laughs> cabinet depends on these two sectors. <laughs> so that's an extra little bit of burden. Um, and uh, but ministers are also calling for market diesel, I think. Uh, but you know what? Some some people do call, yeah. uh, but unfortunately, I also go through the same problem. Yeah. So I, I send my drivers. Uh, I'm lucky that I have a couple of drivers that who will take their shifts and go and park the vehicle and get some fuel in. But um, of course, um, uh, they they know that it's very difficult for for me to allocate something for them. So they will require. They will inquire about uh, when fuel will be available. Yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. the basic questions that everyone else keeps asking. You know, the now, now the problem, of course, ah, this is a couple, yes, lots yes. of questions. This is Shana Kamra Singh. Yeah. Uh, Pre-February procurement number so that we know whether it's an actual shortage or panic and hoarding created by unscrupulous elements. Um, well, actually, February, mm, January, uh, the numbers we should have brought into the country were much less than what we had planned for. Right. Uh, there was a shortage in uh, foreign exchange as well, uh, but not just for those reasons, but we went through a power cut as well. Right. So when we do go through a power cut, uh, of course, the next uh, way that we have to fulfill the requirements is through uh, diesel power, uh, furnace oil and naphtha. Yeah. So for those things to be available, we need our refinery running as well. So we had to, um, uh, during the last six months, I think there were three uh, instances where our uh, refinery was not operating. Uh, so if our refinery was operating um, at full capacity, um, about 30% of our fuel bill is actually reduced. So that was one of the biggest problems that we had. We had didn't have the refinery and we didn't have the required uh, petroleum products imported to the country. Um, and also the biggest other problem was that a year ago, our fuel bill was about um, $150 million to $200 million. Right. Uh, monthly, but when we free floated the dollar right. um, from 203 to it went up to I remember 300 yeah. uh, in initially, and now it's at 360. Yeah. So every day when it keeps going up, uh, automatically our fuel bill went up, uh, and that was the stage where we were discussing with IMF as well, and that was also the stage uh, central bank was uh, contemplating whether we should go to a technical default or how are we going to pay our debts. So with all these things in um, at that moment in February and March, uh, no, we did not have the required uh, petroleum products in the country. That created a little bit of shortage. Whatever uh, we had as stocks were used mainly for power generation. Power generation. Uh, so for those reasons, of course, it created a 
uh, sort of a, a, a demand massive demand massive absolutely. demand massive, massive so, demand but actually what so uh, i mean uh, to rephrase this i basically what i'm you're saying is that during march uh, january and february the figures that are available now do not actually reflect the actual figures that should be yes um, i remember i think it was honorable uday gamampila who was a yeah. minister at that time I, i was sitting at a different meeting and i saw him um, um, doing the presentations Uh, so our requirements for the month of february if i remember correctly was about 315 million usd uh, but what they could source was about uh, 200 million so there was a gap of about 115 million so 115 million gap at that time would have been about maybe about uh, five consignments right so uh, close to about uh, at least 150000 to 200000 metric tons so that shortage was transferred into month of march month of april but of course from march onwards end of march onwards uh, we did have the indian credit line That's in right. play so we covered the month of april was actually not bad april we covered everything uh, month of may we had a little bit of a shortage Uh, but also the consumption levels have also increased in because that's what I'm but so can you blame them is the question because no, consider this is what this is what we were talking about yeah. also because mm. somebody who doesn't who usually waits till it's right at the bottom <laughs> and right? we knew plenty of those we knew friends <laughs> like the both of us <laughs> right but now unfortunately no no i started collecting as well before i was the power and energy minister <laughs> so there you go yeah, so, so you, all you can't blame them yeah. right and so that's why unfortunately I think Shak, there's a lot more hoarding going on than we like to believe. Yes, I, th- I think more than collecting, it was not collecting, going into cans and stuff like right. that. Right. Whenever we had like a maybe a three-quarter tank, okay, find a fuel yeah. station, That's you go right. in, pump in uh, Make it full. a full, full tank. tank. Yeah. So that was what I did. Right. Um, because we never knew that uh, whether we were going to have adequate fuel and whether we are going to be stuck on the road. So it's it's understandable. Um, but then with the power cuts going into 6 hours 12 hours 13 hours yeah. um, then going into um, steady power cuts right of course people uh, started collecting for generators right their machinery uh, industries were concerned they had to shut down or whether they need to operate so they started collecting but the reality is that we usually import fuel Uh, so when a consignment of fuel comes in it's usually for about a period of 10 days right uh, that's how we manage our stocks uh, but people do start at people did start collecting um, for a week mm. or maybe more than a week as well um, so yeah, even at fuel stations what we distribute is for the uh, 48 hours or uh, maybe a 72 hour period Correct. but um, but right now it's being exhausted yeah. in the so when when people yeah. do start collecting um more than what is required uh and they also collect to keep it as stocks uh so that they will not run out of fuel right so it's understandable but unfortunately we are in a situation uh, we can't do that anymore no. um, um i I've, i've actually gone through the numbers from march to april to may um the calculations that we have done the amount of we are to the fuel stations and what we have as stocks uh what we can easily say is that there is more stocks in the domestic market than with the cpstl or cpc <laughs> wow. Wow. yeah <laughs> so there is at least about two cargo vessels of fuel widely available not in fuel stations but at domestic market but domestic markets yeah so okay, this is so another question anu go yeah, on very pertinent i think but of course i think <laughs> we all know the answer if fuel rationing starts in july how would those earning a living through their tooks bikes cars etc live even the fisher fisher folk yeah no we will have it it there will be difficulties i'm not going to say it's going to be a perfect plan to implement but we'll have to start somewhere right um so what we are going to do is we are going to actually uh, send out uh, some registration forms just to have an understanding of different sectors what their requirements would be daily now try shows of course they have a uh, about 8 liter capacity uh, and if they run the full day maybe about 140 kilometers 150 kilometers they can do that but right now what they're facing is they may be run one day and they stay in a queue another day right so they probably run three or four days a week and they spend three days on the queue so rather than that what we thought was if we can give them a guaranteed daily quota or a guaranteed weekly quota right uh, for everyone el- else as well uh, so we have to figure out how many liters we do allocate for them uh, so that way we will prevent people who are going the going the second or the third turn Correct. collecting fuel to be sold in other <coughs> markets yes. uh, if we can prevent that 
uh, give everyone that equal opportunity of getting uh, a guaranteed amount. Uh, that's what we are planning to do with the uh, the rationing system. So and now, when you when you obviously when you when you drive around, you can see the fuel or the structures, and you know, I mean, like Anu said, you need to have your answers. What do you feel at that point? It it, it, it is sad to see that uh, everyone is spending so much time on these lines, and but you have to be very practical about these things as well. How the public reacts to it is also another concern. Yes. Now, um, for example, now we've been trying to be transparent about everything what we do in the ministry. And even we have gone to the level that we display a day before uh, that the distribution oh, takes place. Be, These yeah. are the fuel stations that will be getting uh, auto diesel or 92 petrol or 95 petrol, right. super diesel. So these are the ones that we are giving a priority. Of everything will be fulfilled. Right. Um, now I have looked at the numbers. There's about 95% have been covered. But there's about 5% that does not get covered daily. Right. Right. So we attend to them the next day early morning. What we do is we try to attend to them. But what we have to understand is that now when you say one load of fuel going into a fuel station, that's 6,600 litres. Right. Uh, so that's uh, so certain bowsers carry 33,000. Right. It's one order. We start unloading 6,600. So if you do the maths right, 6,600. Uh, say everyone is given a quota of 30 liters. Okay. Now with the uh, the, the pricing that yeah. we have given right now, yeah. 10,000 rupees and 3,000 rupees for tri yeah. and all these things, maximum uh, ceiling prices, yeah. uh, someone bought 30 liters. Correct. So if you divide 6,600 by 30, that's 220 consumers. Right. right. But, but when people you go have done the math already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, all, yeah all my friends say, Bajang, I'm in the 47th position, so I'm fairly sure that... Yeah, but Anun, what I'm trying to understand is now, yes, today, this morning, just this morning, my, yeah. my office is right next door to Flower Road yeah. uh, Fuel Station. Right. So the Flower Road Fuel Station, I, now there are four different lines. That's right. uh, I don't even know where it starts <laughs> yeah. from. So one line, the tri the guys who were in line, was actually going around Marcus Fernando Road, yes, uh, next right. to his, yes. uh, the, the tennis courts, yeah, yeah. right in front of the opposition, leader of the opposition, his house, right. uh, office complex, and coming back to the Amika Pereira's house, <laughs> right. and joining back again from Flower Road. Right. <laughs> so I actually did a count to see there was more than 300 of course. Yeah. Shows at that line. Yeah. So um, we have to understand, like, once it's been 140, it takes three days. Right. So it practically takes three days. There are fuel stations that we do distribute multiple times during a day. Oh, take right. urban, urban uh, uh, fuel stations, you take Felix Pereira, you take Rossmead Place, right. uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, and right in the night, uh, in the afternoon. Oh. So we do two loads for do certain fuel stations which require much more than the other ones. Right. But urban ones, uh, sorry, rural ones, uh, usually get about once in three days or once in four days. Right. So uh, it's a difficult situation. Even if we flood the market, say now we get a vessel of petrol, we get a vessel of diesel, and we try to flood the market, even this scenario, it doesn't help. Uh, if we are to continue with the power cuts, people will still be collecting for generators. Mm. If we are going to continue with the gas shortage, people are still going to be uh, taking a lot of uh, kerosene. Right. Yeah. So the demand for kerosene has gone up. Uh, industries are also collecting, they have their own consumer tanks. Right. Uh, there's about 2,000 industries registered with CPC. Correct. They have paid in advance, <laughs> uh, but when they do collect, they collect for a whole month. Okay. But we do get shipments only for a week. So that is the problem that we are facing right now. So that's why we want to see, you know, different um, proposals right. have come our way. Uh, certain people have said, okay, why don't you do even numbers, odd numbers? On certain days. Uh, actually, Anu, Anu, actually, Anu, yeah, yes. when I was coming here, I, I mean, I work in uh, Triad as well, you know. So, uh, one of my friends there actually pointed out to me, you know, just ask the minister, why can't we have like one day dedicated to three wheelers and motorbikes, mm. another day dedicated to cars and jeeps? Well, Anu, you will have the same question again. Tri Shaws and everyone, they work on a daily. Uh, right. That's correct. Daily, so daily, I, 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 yeah, daily I said, income. you know, look, I can have, I, but I want to come and ask you, you know, mm. so that we'll have it from your mouth. And I think it's also opportune to point out right now that uh, Minister Kanchana Vijay Sekhar is not responsible 
for LP gas. I do get so many questions in the morning uh, and e even during the day, um, especially from my constituents in, in Matara. Right. Uh, we uh, stand in line. How do we get the tokens? Uh, when is the next consignment? I think I, I made that mistake of going and answering one question in Parliament. Right. When someone uh, got up and asked about the gas situation, I got a call from the uh, the, the party leader's office and said, uh, sin since the finance minister is basically the one in charge of the yeah. uh, litro uh, and laugh gas situation, yeah. uh, but uh, prime minister is also the finance minister, so he was not in the chamber. So I got up and answered on behalf of him. Whoops! And, uh, <laughs> yeah, and, uh, I, I think since then, but I do sit in some certain meetings with them because we take the the gas issue, the the power issue. Um, the full issue, everything with the banks, everyone daily we take meetings. So we are all coordinating together. So I have some sort of understanding, um, but it's a very difficult uh, of course. Uh, thing you know, to answer. There is, I mean, would you just mentioned the fact that the rural areas actually get fuel once in three days. But why are we actually getting complaints and protests where claiming consumers are claiming that we haven't had fuel for the last five days, for the last seven days? Uh, and obviously disrupting normal life at that point. Clearly understandable, standing in line for three, four, five days is not easy. Lots to give up. So how does that work? And, and just a quick one, does the shed, I mean obviously it's the shed that actually places the order. Yep. So once they do place the order is when you send the Bowser. Yep. Um, no, it, it now, this is a question that I've been asked so many times. Right. People call me and say we haven't received in seven, eight days. Right. But what I do is now I get all this information. I, I do a last five day how the distribution take, took place. So every day in the morning, um, they send me a list and say 1,140 fuel stations. This is how we distributed the last five days. So when I go through the list, it's impossible actually to find a station which has not received in five there are instances where they have gone maybe four days without fuel right, right. so but with the demand that is there right now uh, it's um, i know the uh, I, I know it's 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 a very difficult situation for people to even stay in four days for a line oh yeah um, so but certain instances where we have actually seen uh, maybe a, a fuel station has not got fuel for six or seven days when we go back and check what you said earlier uh, comes into play, whether they have made the order, whether there is sufficient oh, right. cash.